dun, dun, dun. The blue thing spinning. Ross, Ross, the blue thing the spinning. The blue thing spinning. No. Oh, the uh, blue thing has spun. The blue thing has spun. Uh, I think officially the blue thing has spun. I think the blue thing spun. <sighs> Are we live again? We're live. Uh, it's we're live. live. Uh, hey, Brett, don't be scared. It's safe, I promise. Oh, look at us. Ta-da, here we are with Brett. There's us. I see us. There we are. Okay, there we are. We're alive. Are you alive? I am alive. It's alive! God, I love young Frankenstein. <laughs> How are you today, Brett? <laughs> I am awesome, and it's nothing you need to worry about. I'm sure it will get better. Mm. You know what? I find a good ointment can do a lot for those itches. But anyways... <laughs> <laughs> Ross, how are you doing today, brother? Doing pretty good. Doing, doing pretty, pretty good. good. It's kind of the new the new Friday thing. We've we've officially got a schedule for Friday now, and oh yeah, we do idiots. shows on Friday now. <laughs> yeah, we well, we did. We did, but we did. We did every Friday for a long time. Yeah. And then we backed off to hitting hard Tuesday, Wednesday. We'd usually do a interview on you know somewhere else, but we tried to keep it centered Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. We're gonna keep that. Yeah. Where's where's the line? I'll still be available Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, I will admit that I have. We have built twelve other spots in. Well, no, twelve spots total. So nine additional spots on top of where's the line. Oh, geez. Yeah, I know. Ten to twelve shows a week. That's the goal. Um, some of it's set aside for music. I, Brett, speaking of music, I'm telling you, got to get in that Discord, brother. It, it's got musicians from all over the world sharing different kinds of music. It's you know what, if you're not a hip-hop guy, but you play guitar, I can picture where it goes as far as beats. It's a bunch of... I, Ross's first song will debut on two continents. His producer's in Nigeria. Wait a second. What Discord is this? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on, What's buddy? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I it's, missed the trick. Which Discord? There, uh, Discord. It's Studio 586B, so I'll... I can send you I can send you a link to the Discord. Yeah. Um, awesome, get, man. I oh, I want to talk to you guys about all that. I need to make a record as part of my my mission, man. You could talk to Reggie Reg of Crash Crew, one of the first guys to ever record on Sugar Hill Records. Uh, you may have heard of them. He signed in 1980. He was the one of the first guys ever pressed a vinyl. That's one of the guys nice. we're working with. Um, like I said, Simon Korlaz in Nigeria is amazing. He picked up on one of the demos Ross had and was like, is there, you know, is it okay if I produce this? I'd really like wow. to produce it. And I've heard pieces of it since. Oh my God. It's going to debut actually on Labor Day here in the United States. So September 5th, we'll be doing a midnight to midnight show. We'll be yeah, running a nice. full 24 hours straight through. Hopefully, the, the goal is we've kind of evolved. I think there'll be more friends involved this time. Hopefully, we can talk to you about some of that, Brett. That uh, When we did Memorial Day, we did 24 hours, and uh, baby, it was us. Yeah, it was pretty, yeah. <laughs> we got some people in, but it was it was pretty much us during the, the wee hours of the morning. Well, that it was us with people. And we're talking about the idea that one of the things that's going to progress is the idea we want to show other people doing, doing their, their thing. thing. Yeah. That it's not... It's never been about us. It's always been about you, Brett. <laughs> I'm still stuck on music, Ross. Please tell me very quickly for the sake <laughs> no, of no, time absolutely. here. I know you want to, You're fine. I know you want to do the questions. What? What? Do you play instruments, Ross? Do you mix? Do you sing? Do you uh, write? Tell me something. I mix. I sing. I write. I record. He noodles on everybody. instruments. He's I, not giving himself credit. I don't. I, I noodle on instruments. Yeah. But I, not trained. I'm more on. I'm more on piano than I am on anything else. Um, but I, I make beats, so I do, I do a lot, but it, instrumentation is the one thing that I really want to get into that I haven't been able to dip my hands into yet, but we've got a, a 16 year old kid that's, you know, straight band kid, right? Horn sounds, horns. Wow. But the funny thing is he hit us we were listening to his music we were doing his, so one of the things we do is after we do a 10 questions with somebody we like to do another interview and another the idea is we're building rabbit holes right. so especially with the music guys the next show is let's play your music and talk about it then we move it to Spotify because then they can actually pay the artists 
YouTube immediately strikes it. Facebook, you got to buy it eight hours if you want to see it. Yeah. But then it it moves to Spotify, which then moves it around as both a video and audio because Spot Spotify now allows both, or Anchor allows right. both, and we whatever however we're uploading. Yeah. But that gives us the ability and the weird. So we're listening to this sixteen year old, right? King's an amazing kid. First off, I know I'm. So the first couple of songs I liked. I'm not saying I didn't like them. I liked them. But then he pulls out this song that he recorded when he was 13. Well, he wrote it when he was 13. Wrote it when he... No, I think he... Re, he said he... He said, re, he, he, said he... Re, I'm telling you, that recording was older, too. Okay. I, it was... It, it totally blew my head off. That, but any, we end up down these rabbit holes where you end up with that. We get to actually interact with the musician and... We're gonna. The next show we're working on is a contest-based show, with you drop. We drop beats once a week, and then all of the different artists look at those four or five beats and come up with what they want, or maybe they only work on one. And then once a week, we talk with artists and we go over like the stuff that was that we thought was the coolest or the most unique, and so a place for both the guys putting out the beats and the guys rapping to come together and then hear their stuff in a way that's meaningful. Awesome. It, it's it, I, I get for the record. I would talk about it all day too. But today's show, today's show is about Ross. No, no, no it's, it's about not me. About Ross. No, it's not about. It's me. about who? It's about Brett. It's about Brett. What's up, Brett? What's up, Brett? Where Where are you from, man? Technically speaking, I am from New Jersey, uh, <laughs> Central New Jersey. Okay. I actually know that part of the world. That um, Did you? yeah. So when Avaya shut Avaya shut down all of their, they were like, okay, they didn't shut down. What they were doing was migrating servers and moving information. That's not the important bit. I'm the guy that goes in and removes all the equipment. Used to be, I should say. So Avaya's huge server setup that I, I was there as the guy from Belgium was pulling final plugs. He was a good time. He was funny. <laughs> he was great. But yeah, no, I, it was hidden right in a a part like you never like the hardest part was even figuring out. We spent a day trying to figure out how we would even be able to get a semi into the location. That that part of New Jersey, I know right where you are. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, but that's it where was you started. Spot. That's where I started. But if I remember correctly, you're kind of got a little bit of wanderlust that you 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 tend to nail not be easy to nail down. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, well, I, I was basically based out of New Jersey and within the kind of same area where I grew up till I was about 37. But the last decade, yeah, I've been a global nomad. I'm currently in Germany, uh, spent a lot of time in England, some in France, some in Rotterdam and Netherlands. Oh, wow. To Potsdam, Mexico, uh, U.S. Yeah, so it's been really uh, amazing. I, I relate so deeply to that because as somebody that I traveled to Thailand at 18 and stayed for almost a year as an exchange student, but then I had kids and the way I ended up a truck driver was mm -hmm. it allowed me to have some of that without, and still meet my responsibilities that desire to no, I need to see the, a, the people and be the in between. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's perfect. That's perfect. I love it. The in between exactly what I like mm -hmm. about traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, People will look at me and go, oh, the United States is so crowded. And I'm like, I drove it. I'm telling you, there's more field than there are people. <laughs> right. Trust me, get into Kansas. Tell me there are humans there just so that I'll feel better about all the corn and soybean I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've only driven through that area once when I was a kid in a cross country trip. <laughs> well, east of the Mies East of the Mississippi. East of the, the Mississippi. Mississippi. Am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I crooked letter, crooked letter, I humpback, humpback, I? <laughs> east of the Mississippi. Almost everywhere I traveled was east of the Mississippi, but I would stay a day, so I'd work on site. So, kind of, you know, it created these really cool memories of, I guess, that half of the United States. Traveling traveling the Midwest is, is nothing but field. Yeah. Midwest <laughs> is field. Midwest Upstate is New York, field. not far off, except it's grapes. Yeah. So, but all of the great memories I have of traveling. It makes me wonder, so your first memories are probably New Jersey. If you close your eyes and look back, is there, I have these moments that I can literally picture. You know, I can picture moving in, there's a, there's a house that I remember moving into 
only because I can close my eyes and I can see my godfather holding the door open for my dad, my mom right behind him, then my brother, me at the bottom, and it's the first time we're walking into that house. What are, what are your first memories? Uh, when I closed my eyes this time and was following along with you, I, I would say what came to my mind's eye with some of my good friends. Mm. I think my go-to memories seem to be about friendships. I was very fortunate to have four, three, and then four really good best friends uh, from age seven on. Oh, wow. uh, we all lived in the same neighborhood, like, and just turned out that way. So I tend to, at least historically speaking, like when you, or when you ask, I tend to default to thinking about my friend, my best friends when I, when I was a kid and um, just palling around. Uh, it's pretty privileged uh, to not have too many stressors and decent family life and, life, and all that. Life so, has seen so from a 10 speed. Dealing. Life, life has seen from yeah. a 10 speed. From a BMX. Uh, BMX, either way you go, right? Yeah. I always find that interesting. I, we tended to move about every two years. It ends up, mm. it wasn't military, because he wasn't military. It ends up, it may have been that he was bipolar, actually. Eventually he was diagnosed. <laughs> That's probably what it was. <laughs> but oh man, it could be a blast at Christmas if he was manic. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, right, I bet. <laughs> oh man, the stuff you'd get on the days he was feeling like he owned the world. Shoot, he owned the world. <laughs> my, my favorite story is, um, my brother is a graduated with a major in physics from the University of Chicago. So a, a, a mm. decent physics degree, you know? Um, yeah. But my father in a manic side one time was <laughs> sure that being that my brother had a degree in physics, that if they decided they wanted to make changes, my brother should be able to do that. That wouldn't it be easier if you could put stuff on the bottom of the table so that it wasn't in the way? <laughs> <laughs> If you had to pick a favorite memory with your buddies, tell me, tell me, tell me, what what's a summer day look like? No guilt, uh, just a great time. A great time. Gosh. Back when there what was still nothing me? to carry. <laughs> Go ahead. I know, right? I'm I'm really. That's another. I'm 47, so I'm really kind of happy that I ended up being the age where I got to grow up up until about 18 or 19, really, without cell phones and internet and all that. So, God, yeah, um, it it helps. It's a really interesting age group that we are, Matt, actually, because we can identify with our our folks and also with some of the younger people with the internet stuff. So, absolutely, that we were um, that bridge. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, gener I always say Generation X has some unresolved sort of redemption moments still yet to come on the world stage. Um, the best mm -hmm. of us were busy working. It looks like we're lifting our heads to go, what the hell did we let you guys do while we were at our heads down? You people are idiots. <laughs> that's how I currently I take it. That, that's my big take on that all is our generation is like, oh, we were supposed to keep our head down and work. That's not working. And we're st our heads are starting to look up like, what's going on? This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> What's going I on? Actually ha I actually had the opposite in a sense because okay. of the first episode I had when I was 19. So I kind of stepped out of the the norm at mm, that point. Early. Um, and I kind of, I think I'm a classic representation of the, of what got termed like the slacker generation of tuning and being depressed and all that kind of stuff. Um, as a response, as far as I'm concerned, as Krishnamurti said, it's no measure of sanity to adjust to a an insane society or whatever i can't i'm not getting his quote right but i think a lot of us came out of that we're growing up if i guess at post 80s and all the stock market stuff mm. and all that kind of advertising you and mean where we, we were taught that greed was what matters greed yeah <laughs> exactly so i think a lot of us took a u-turn and was like i ain't, and we got perceived to be slackers but i think we were quite deep actually in kind of saying no to that and yeah. now like not you're playing saying that now game that we've picked now we've people picked are our, actually not playing uh, that game yeah. yeah but we have picked similarly like you're saying now we're picking our heads up after all that time and the, the experiences and saying we're not done yet like we're mm -hmm. going to come back or we're coming back with a different perspective so yeah well I i'm excited about that i feel almost like there's a meaningful wave and 
part of what's pulling the younger wave is us lifting our heads and going, we're doing something. That I felt a, a damn Greta Thunberg, I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, that, okay, if a 12-year-old can get up in front of the UN and tell him off, what am I doing sitting on my butt? Right. How, how <laughs> can I? I got to get in the air. I, that, and so I went through getting therapy and finally dealing with the depressive and anxiety aspects of my life at about 50, just before. That, you know, I had spent my entire life going, I can get it, I, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it that way, trying. You know, and then it isn't until the point where I finally like, okay, I don't have control over this. That I end up here. So that all of that, though, now makes sense. It all just falls into, it's like, oh, that was all, mm -hmm. I, I can look back now and all the, the crap it was stuff that I needed for here. I, right. Which, you know, it's it's made working easier. And it makes me wonder, how do you work, Brett? It's okay to say, what does that question mean? Because it's a Rorschach. Yeah, the the I, reality gotta... is they're built that way. <laughs> don't yeah. shy away from it. That people will be like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. What does that mean to you? And the questions are short. Short enough that the answers are yours, not mine. Yeah, uh, I think I'm pretty, I like to be neurodiversely literal. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to go super literal. Mm -hmm. How do I work? I work spontaneously. I work by following my highest excitement. Uh, there's a guy out there named Bashar who's like this channel. Uh, and all that aside, I like I like what he calls his formula, which is I follow my highest excitement with zero expectations with the choices I have available to me to the best of my ability. Mm. So like, that's how I work. In I dig that. Short, a actually, for the the truth of it is, that's how I work. Yeah. Well, right. That I I think to some. That one of the things we so we sit here and we'll realize, we talk about the joy of it. Don't we? Right. That there's. Yeah. That. If it wasn't for the passion, I think we're following our passions, aren't we? Sort of. Yeah. Isn't that kind of what I we're think, doing? I think I think there's some passion involved in this project. Yeah. I think there's some. Passion. <laughs> and next for a 10 on the level of enthusiasm scale yeah you know what yeah i think there might be some passion involved i said it deadpan on purpose but I anyway <laughs> um, no I, I really do i really do i think that oh i love you, that man. that's the way that we work is trying to be as diligent as possible and making sure that we're really doing what we feel needs to be done you know mm. Because the list is so damn long. Yeah, that you can't you can't just avoid things. You can't well, just skip things. I was thinking that there's so much of it that what you have to do is pinpoint things. Yeah, you have to go. This is what we're doing. That yes. was a big part of our week this work, Brett. Week. Was finding words. That's right. We spent a week with Matt reading the dictionary in the hopes that he'd find words again. Um, <laughs> was schedules are hard for us. That's not something either. Both of us were. You know what? I I bet you too those gifted kids that didn't have to work really hard at stuff. Yeah. So you got really good at not having to schedule doing things because, yeah. hey, you know it what? It just happened. You just pull that off. You yep. know what? No big deal. You just set a time to do it and it got oh, done. Oh, yeah. No, it got done. Yeah. Ten-page report? It's only midnight, man. I got another six hours before <laughs> I even have to go get up and get ready for school. <laughs> More than once. Yeah. I'm not even making that up. I've written some essays on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll never remember the one I did where I to see whether or not they were we had to put footnotes mm -hmm. crap ton of footnotes and i i quoted mork and mindy's guide to sex there's no such <laughs> book in existence but i built it in in the back just as and no they didn't even notice not a word which is probably a good thing because i made up most of the other quotes in those books too but there was a tester in there if they came yeah, mork yeah, and yeah. mindy i was gonna be like oh that was a joke Right. And hopefully it'd cover the rest of it. God, I was an asshole. Right. God, at 17 or 18, you know what? I was just a real dick. <laughs> but so this week, it's been like this eye-opening thing. We like started building our schedules and talking about Labor Day and built. I'm happy with it. I don't know if it's going to fall apart next week, but I think we actually realized that we work for a living. 
Did we yeah. go through that this week? Was that part I of what happened? That's what we went through this There was week, a moment yeah. this week where I looked at you, oh, fuck, this is what I do for a living. Yeah. <laughs> There's no money. Had to realize, oh, shoot, this is what I do. <laughs> this is I what I do. I keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's important where yeah, that that's mix a real, is. That's a real thing, man. Like, mm-hmm. I guess, like, the chicken comes home to roost as far as evolution, where at some point, all of my ease and grace up until age 18 or 19 like you're saying easy get get a get b pluses maybe instead of a's i guess without doing anything like always having friends considered good looking all this kind of stuff like it was so easy for me dude mm. oh man He's got it was a eyes. real shock the eyes it was a were real fucking shock up girls for I... a lot of years i'm telling <laughs> you those eyes were just he'd go look at him and they'd be like oh okay i'm going with or whichever it, there's no yeah, I'm wrong not answer. Lie. That's true. That's true. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to lie. That was it. it Good yeah. eyes go farther than people realize. I'm telling you. <laughs> Think about how many chicks you go, yeah, I love her eyes. You do it in your head, we don't talk yeah. about it. Or guys, it's eyes are powerful tools. Mm-hmm. If you want to know how to own the world, look into their eyes and you won't want to own it. You'll just want to be there with them. That was deep. <laughs> I know, it makes me wonder. <laughs> Being that we need to lighten the mood. Brett, how do you play, though? How do I play? It's important. Uh, we all need to play. I play. I think I play seriously. I think I play recklessly. Okay. And creatively. I like that. Do you set aside time to play? Like, do you, is it important enough to you to go? And one of the things I run into is I have trouble scheduling what I think of as play, which maybe just going in the wood. It's the regular stuff, but letting myself have time that's just for me. I just, it can include other people, but I mean, it's the value as opposed to the, I'm not good at it if I don't schedule it with somebody else. If I don't right. go, I'm going to go do something with a nine year old. I'm going to go meet my mom at the park or, you know what, that, I'm awful. I if I sit down to play World of Warcraft, I feel guilty. <laughs> that even though I'm trying, I'm trying to make it so I, I schedule an hour a week to let myself play. I haven't played because if I sit down, I just I just feel bad. There's 500 other things that need done. Do wow. You, do you make t- do you do you find an hour in your week, an hour in your day? Do you find some time that is? I'm I just plan gonna on, play around. I'm just gonna play. Well, first of all, Matt, we're going to have to talk about that at some point. (laughs) 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 One hour a week, man. We got to work on it. Um, (laughs) You know, I mean, well, this is where the, you know, the interesting uh, interpretations, perspectives, and semantics all come in because, you know, that's where I hesitated with work and play. and That's the fun of it. You're in a playground right now. (laughs) For the most part, I... You know, I'm not. La- I, I don't think I'm really lacking in this department. For the most part, I think I'm mostly playing. I like um, that. Compared to working in this version of the dichotomy we're talking about. Yeah. And sometimes, because the play involves how I make my way through the world emotionally, financially, mm. uh, psychologically, spiritually, it can also sometimes start edging closer to maybe what other people call work. Meaning, mm. like stress, like where you, things you wouldn't a- automatically identify with play, and that's why we make the discernment. Like play is, let's say, no stress. You know, it's uh, maybe it doesn't have a time limit. It's maybe you're doing something you really love to do, which is normally what people don't associate with work, which is well, so I sad. Agree. I the funny um, thing is, I think the perfect moment, and we're, I'm I'm kind of playing around with my play moments because you're right. I this is play that I love, I, I absolutely love what I'm doing and I've found a place where I exist that I didn't expect to with right. this um, that, you know, in a really interesting conversation and I've had, you know what, first I have some people that I know when I get to these questions as opposed to a conversation, I, I move more of the time to other places because they don't discern the three as different. That I know right. that, that there are, I have some friends that I know that going in, and I'm kind of that way as well to some extent. But I did realize that sometimes, as much as a lot of my work is play, a lot of my I'm silly everywhere. I don't know if you've noticed. I tend to be a little on the silly side. 
And my mom used to say, what was it? Delightfully unfettered by convention was how she described herself, which I found incredibly embarrassing as a child. <laughs> and I have now realized I am um, delightfully unfettered by convention. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're right that when you get those moments where work and play and pray are all one thing. We had a good friend, Calvin Hobbes. We, we talked about this next question. And when we talked to him about how do you pray, he's like, it's my music. That's where I'm connected with the divine. That's where I'm at one with the divinity. And sometimes the stuff that comes out of me, I'm not even expecting. And in that mm. moment, I realized that's, this is my prayer. That, hey, have you met my friends? That, hey, I see you, Brett. I see a person. Not, you know, that I see depth, not word, not like a four letter word. A four letter word doesn't, well, <laughs> I'm sure it's happened, but I don't think four letter <laughs> words are the best description of Brett, even though his name has four letters in it. That there's so, you're a symphony, not a note. But so, how do you take that how do you pray question? Uh, I think I would have struggled with it a bit hadn't you mentioned your friend. Mm. Um, so I've kind of got a cheat sheet now. Like I'm, I'm a little bit stuck now contextualizing in terms of your friend mentioning, you know, how does he connect to, right. to the divine or, or I, something, which I may, which yeah. I may not have said, I may not have automatically said or, or thought about. But again, it's um. It's interesting. I would say, ideally, the word play and pray are like the holy trinity of, and it's it's whatever transcends and includes them, which is like following your bliss or something. Mm. Um, and like what is, and they express themselves. That those are kind of like three key expressions of the one following your bliss. So how do I? Um, on one hand my mission is literally probably to be in full-time prayer in terms of divine mm -hmm. alignment with with my true self and that's how and then it expresses as how i work and play so ideally it would be everything i do is a prayer if mm -hmm. i was going to kind of god i like you that. know be a, like that's so freaking that's prayer, deep I like that. that's so perfect that's yeah, yeah i follow it's true. I, i'm with it's you it's true it's true for the most part other than because it's all inclusive, sometimes I'm in a state that maybe we wouldn't associate with prayer, Absolutely. you know, where I'm working on my own self. And but that again is on that recursive meta level is also being in prayer. Well, um, it, and then I would say being creative when I'm being creative, when I'm in these calls with you guys, when mm, I'm playing my guitar, when I'm jamming with my friends about software design, that is like your friend Calvin. Again, that would be my most visceral uh easy answer go right. to like that would be my prayer trust me it hit me i that as he was saying it that was when the epiphany about what it, it brought it into a perspective like that's what i love about doing this brad is that what uh as we look at these simple pieces from different angles and perspectives where everybody feels them differently everybody sees the questions differently and time and time again i find so uh, my shrine, quote unquote shrine, I don't really do shrines, but I have a Buddha over there. It's got one of, do you remember the old Stanley coffee mugs that you'd picture a guy going to the work site with? You know the ones I mean, mm. it's a big, so it's got yeah. one of those. It's got a Buddha with his hands up in the air in front of it. And then it's got a giant steel jack, like super sized, because it's work, play, pray. It's the thermos, it's the giant jack, it's the Buddha. Then next to it is Bilbo with Gollum chasing it, a Lego version, kind of <laughs> small. Don't get too attached to the ring. The sign behind it says, enjoy the journey. And the office is full of skeletons to remind you nobody gets out alive. So I, it resonated so deeply when you said, you know what? No, the goal is it's all prayer. I, I have this beautiful friend in Vietnam that just keeps reminding me meditation is non-distraction and mm. so my goal is to always be present not distracted that I find that the things I see in the world around me if I'm not busy everywhere else are amazing 
And the reality is I've never been here before. You know, this moment is a one-time thing in the universe and then there's another one. <laughs> it's the only place I can exist. So it's, it's, I find it so moving to time and again see it from, yeah, the per perspectives are changing me. Mm. What do you love? Do I love? Love, love me do. I love, I love possibilities. Possibilities. Mm. I, okay. I, I love being open to something miraculous being possible and also of course no, I'll just stick with that I love I love being open to that I love I that's... I love the creative I love the creative mm. half of that that we can create things and I love being untethered from those unfettered conventions. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the best? And she would say, it, it used to drive me crazy. We'd be at the grocery store and it'd be like, I swear there was 45 minutes extra every time because you had to talk to the deli person, you had to talk to the bakery person, then you had to talk to the <laughs> And I'm just like, Mom, we gotta go. You, you remember. And <laughs> she would just like, you don't need to be embarrassed. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm just delightfully unfettered by convention. <laughs> 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 that, so my experience of late and there's a lot of epiphanies going on with me lately is that this has been we sometimes refer to it as a quickening there are moments where it feels like oh my god there's just so much coming in and what I mean by that isn't the work side or the studio side that the more I've admitted I don't know anything about the moment I'm in like I, I've never been here before the more I've decided that to treat each day like I was born this morning and like I'm going to die tonight. So just with that sense of awe and investigation, that the longer I'm here, the more opportunities I see in every single moment. That it's been like it's it's like seeing more options by being present. And it's so mm -hmm. instead of it's like oh the universe just has you know is taking care of me, I feel sometimes like because some amazing stuff has happened like oh okay and you just fall into that and then okay you just right Ross that we have a consistent sort of stumbling forward in a way where suddenly things just show up yeah things just happen it, it it's weird but it happens <laughs> and my theory on that isn't that oh and then the universe the universe is universing right but if you're paying attention there's more strawberries than you think yes if you're not paying attention all you're looking for is weeds all you find is weeds mm-hmm we look for strawberries. Try to look for strawberries. I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, I look for weed. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> but strawberries and cream are nice too. Strawberry cough is an excellent, um, yeah, anyways. Strawberry is my favorite strawberry cough's flavor a nice, uh, of cream cheese, actually. It's the best well, one. Strawberry really? cough is a great sativa, though. Give you a nice lift and, oh, really? you know, it sets your brain right. I personally am a fan of uh, super silver haze because my last name is Hayes, but that's <laughs> as now You're anybody that wants to go look super those up haze. on Leafly, I mean, <laughs> those are good strains. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I've always been a, I've always been a sativa guy. I, you know what? How about you, brother? We'll, 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 we'll t so, do you love sativas or indicas? Do you like to be into couch, or do you like to be up? You know, the truth is, I haven't done an. I, I default to indica based on my like part like archetype and what I know, but I've never not done a proper. Even though for all the years I was kind of a stoner in a sense, and like, but I was never the guy that like learned how it grows and all the chemical. Like it was, the, I just loved it. <laughs> like, right. I, was, I, I never got like like I did with other topics and things. For some reason, I never got into the like the history or anything. So I I know I prefer indica because uh, I have this you know manicky type. Yeah, so energy. no, you would like to bring it natural. down. I, yeah, I totally I like to, understand. I like, I like to feel it in my body. I like to feel relaxed. Like, yeah, I like to uh, chill out. edibles, <laughs> edibles. He prefers to feel it in his body. I'm telling you, if you want to get the world off opiates, the best pain management system out there is edibles. Edible THC. Don't smoke it. That's not. They get your head high. 
the, 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 mm -hmm. if what we're doing is taking it medicinally no there's a there's okay so when i had back surgery the way in which i treated it was uh micro thc micro psilocybin so not large in amounts but it right. meant that i could still feel the pain i knew it was there mm -hmm. didn't care but i was aware the big risk on opiates and is the addiction to opiates is that then you no longer have the sensation you're more likely to injure yourself again it's like shutting off the pain which mm -hmm. isn't really valuable yeah. And it doesn't teach you pain management because you're not like, oh, I just don't right. want it to hurt again. But with the THC psilocybin mix, and I've, I've, I'm an amateur pharmacologist, if you will. I don't claim any schooling. I have to science every. Everybody's like, oh, he's so spiritual. He's such a really <laughs> spiritual guy. He's an old soul. But you know, I gotta science it all out. I love the <laughs> science behind it all. You know, that when it comes to THC, I prefer about a 50-50 to 40-60 um, CBD THC mix because clinical trials currently show that's the most valid when it comes to risks of paranoia. That if, okay. if, you, if you mix it up, it's better for you. Because I, I love that. I, I go read it all. <laughs> I'm just a nerd, man. Uh, no, I'd love, to get, I'd, love to get, I'd love to get into it. And I mean, if, 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 you, that, if like, you want to go have fun, go look up Uncle Ben's on the on the, the internets and see what you can grow with rice, because <laughs> that'll make you a really fun guy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Some what Uncle you, Ben's will go a long way. What do you fear? What do I fear? Um, traditionally, there's been a fear of failure. Mm. of not reaching a perceived potential the gap between this sense of capability destiny possibility and then not necessarily at least perceivably having that experience that's been a big fa fear i also have the paradoxical fear of death to some degree not so much psychologically and spiritually but the prop maybe the physical process and that mm. last bit of unknowing i'm big matt i'm really big on the on the not knowing thing there's a I love there's it. a big difference between there's a big difference between the mental like philosophical stance that we might all experience like when we kind of maybe study ourselves or in the zen and where like not knowing is like a phrase you might use but living and not knowing is different it's like so when powerful. you really when when you really don't know not no, I, lip service I, no i'm with you no i i literally am with you one of the things so there's a bit of me there's a yeah. bit of me there's a bit of me that has all these like sensations and thoughts and anticipations about what is called physical death but there's this tiny bit of me that has some fear about not knowing exactly mm. like what it is or if it is because i'm just humbly like i think i know i think i have an idea i think i would guess if i had a gamble but honestly like, I don't have a way of knowing because I've never been, I've never experienced what people You've call death. You've never been right? there. Like you're saying that? Right. I'm eternal. First of all, my sense is that I'm eternal and infinite. Right. And there's no such thing as living and dying. That's a con that's Which, a, which a, piece a, of you? Are you talking about narrative. the part of you that's universe or are you talking about the meat sack? And what's the difference, you know? <laughs> right? Where's that line? <laughs> Those and friggin' lines, man. <laughs> exactly so those are those are my big fears it's like some version of not knowing around death and failure yeah not knowing is hard what do you think you know on a dime in those regard in, <laughs> in those in those in those regards the, the the only honest thing i can say is i think i know that i am or I'm there's something mm. here something is happening now I could go into like I think I know about all this other wisdom stuff or like how life could be lived blah 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 but really when you ask me like what do I know in this whole context of not knowing the only thing I honestly think I know is and it's again I'm pointing at the moon the whole Zen thing I don't really know how to put a word to it but the best okay. thing I can think of is I know that there's something that knows and that's me I love the way I know no I know I know knowing right so I, I don't think there is like knowing is what we are not knowing or the known but knowing I have some really cool friends that the way they phrase it is we're 
we are the fingers of the universe, the textile experiencers. And what they'll do on a bad day, you know, and the universe wants to feel everything. Everything, everything. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, ugly, everything. It wants to know, all sensation, right? And so we're for that, and they'll look up at the sky on a bad day and go, so did you feel that? Did you really need to? Was that something you really needed to feel? You sure? Could we, we couldn't have skipped this. <laughs> <laughs> right. With the idea that the universe is like, oh, I want to feel this crappy thing today. <laughs> that, uh, it's, well, to me, this is the big trick. I mean, really, ultimately, I end up feeling uncomfortable when I hear myself separating myself from, I, I, yes, like, like the thing, which is again, there's a big gap between like my kind of sense of and my embodiment of it compared to like peak experiences. But I do always bring up, well, yeah, and don't be a victim. Like there's only mm. undivided whole, there's only one undivided whole thing to me in, in action. Like, and I mean that, like we all do. I mean that pretty, pretty seriously. Like that is my outlook. Um, but, it, but again, practicing that and living from that, that's my newest part of my journey personally mm. with non-duality, consciousness, spirituality. It's like living from the knowing is different than just spouting it off God, and talking so about true. it over the dinner table. Like, and that's my new, I, ha I got stuck in my own dogma for quite a while, like we all do. Like mm. I needed to yeah. hear some new voices and new things to make me real laugh at myself basically, which is the most important thing. If there's a question of what's the most important to you, it's like people that can fucking laugh at themselves. You have to, if you can't laugh at, if you can't laugh at yourself, you got a red flag on like for me. Well, it, in so, my yeah. head, five years after anything bad goes bad, you're going to tell crappy jokes about it anyways. Skip five years, start telling yeah. that that's I, I'm, I'm a, you know what? I would have backed Gilbert Godfrey on the joke in the sense of no, I work in the DMZ. It drives Ross crazy. Yeah, it does. It freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> the heck out. Sorry. Sorry. You know, buddy. I'm not. I'm, oh man. <laughs> I so. He, I, I have a, a phrase. I, that I. I'm. All I can say is boy horse. Oh my god. And you know what? I, I can't say anything more of the joke, but I know that you're over there just cringing. Oh my Gosh. Yes. Yeah, so we can talk about Putin's. We can talk about Putin's tiny peepee -pee again. No, let's not talk about Putin's. <laughs> I got oh, haters my. on that one. I actually had people texting me. <laughs> it's like you could tell. You'd say, or if I told the day I talked about the orange guy, mm -hmm. I had somebody reach out through text to let me know that I was a bad guy. Didn't even say his name. <laughs> Just said the orange guy. <laughs> <laughs> And I do on occasion talk about Winnie the Pooh, and that was the day suddenly there was an Asian girl in New York that wanted to make sure I got on Telegraph so they could keep track of my phone, and then she she disappeared, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> then it was like, oh, wow, cool. I talked about Winnie the Pooh too much today, I guess. Oh, I might have I might have mentioned Tiananmen Square, too. That might have come up. That's okay, a so what do you want to know? <laughs> Ross, like, change the subject. Luckily, I have questions do to I do that. Yeah, what do you want to know? <laughs> what do I want to know? I want to know... The way to San Jose? If... <laughs> oh, God, there's so many answers to this. I'm just going to say what came up for me in the Inkblock perspective. Uh, what, what I want to know is, is there life outside of Earth that is specifically appears to be what we might call aliens or somehow uh, identifiable. So what I mean is I'm not talking about different dimensions or like right. that other beings might exist on astral planes. What I mean is like physical, again, I'm making physical the, in our universe, yeah, like in our other, universe, other yeah. things that have evolved to yeah, life. I, I'm making, I'm using the false dichotomy of the inside outside. Like there's a physical shit and all that, but I do, I would like to know that. And the context is I'm not convinced of that. And I find the anthropomorphic argument that we cannot be the only like life like this is equally as anthropomorphic as saying what if we are like why do i don't know why people mm. think i think people think i think it's equally as arrogant to think there's other life in the universe mm. i mean it's paradoxical okay, to some degree i actually but understand sure... that i understand that perspective completely but i don't know i'm open to whatever but i would love to know that's like Ag that, we should start a group that's, that's called always, agnosticism. So that's always that's always been my my perspective on like the God question is it's a plus it's it's a it's a um 
a positive and a negative. It's 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 basically it could be true or it could not be true. But I don't have access to that answer. I don't know that information. I don't know that information. So it's it, it's it's out there. It's just it's not something that I can I can understand either way. And I've never thought about it like that, but aliens would be in that category of things that there's no way we could possibly know. What if we did a show on what the things we're agnostic about and we're honest about it and we called it the agnostic show? <laughs> Cuz that's how I embrace the world. The I okay. I'm right there with you. Duality slipped. There was a while everybody kept looking at me going, I don't know, man, the duality is just slipping away. And I got yin yangs tattooed all over my body. What am I supposed to do now? Turn them into black circles? I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. But any. be a black hole. (laughs) (laughs) You could become a materialist physicist, atheist. Have you heard about the biggest star they found and how big it is? It's it would be out. It would be past Saturn. I forget the name of it. I was reading some stuff on the Hubble stuff yesterday, and they've so the largest star we found, its circumference would be well, it'd be between. Let me see. Well, it's kind of like my penis, like so. I call my penis Saturn. So the size oh of God. the sun would be between Saturn and Uranus, sort of in that taint world. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> It was it was another like ten or nineteen million miles further past Saturn, all sun, all on fire, and I'm like, wow, that's a big that's a big star. I I love, I want to know, but I'm I'm happy with the I don't know answer. That yeah. I try to I try I, to enter these conversations that same way. I'd also like to know firsthand. By the way, this is mm. one of those occasions where hearing other people tell me it's true. So like, obviously I didn't know China existed other than seeing it in books and TV and pictures right. on the internet, but I generally believed that China, at least the thing people are referring to existed without having ever been there. When it comes to this other life or whatever, I need to have a firsthand experience. I get I, what I'm hearing like here is that, that yeah. you know, you've heard about aliens and, but you yourself have not been probed or gotten an alien hand job. Was that what you were but trying even to say? <laughs> But, but the thing more. is, the thi- yes, 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 and, yes, and the thing is, this is my my science, my sciencey I get it. stuff. Uh, I love it, Matt. Is that even if I did experience that, does that mean there was actually an un- an other outside of me, gray reticulum from another star system, giving me a hand job, or did I hallucinate that? Which means it's real enough, but not mm. actually, you know, in the terms of in the using language, world, it right. didn't actually happen. Did but you it, sit on your hand too happen. long, so that it would go to sleep, so that you had the experience of a gray reticulum? I see. So it's a stranger. <laughs> I understand what you're not. No, just... yeah. But you're right. Because one of the things I've had to grasp, the thing that started this show, that started these questions, I know my perspective lies. I know that not only because of, you know, the realities of my mental health, that, you know what, no, it's going to fit the story that brains are made that way. That's how we're designed. You lie to yourself. You're sure that you know this or have experienced that exactly. Shoot, I'll always forget. I was talking to my mom one day, and I, I always remembered when she had this job, and she would come visit. Every, sometimes she had enough time at lunch to come home, and she'd bring me a Twinkie. I loved when she would do that, and it was amazing. So I had this conversation with her. Right now. There was only she only ever bought me one Twinkie. The memory was just so intense that I made it a frequent thing that happened. So that I thought at four or five, she came home regularly and gave me a Twinkie because it was an important memory. So I multiplied it. And at that Mm -hmm. moment you go, oh, no, I want to see through the eyes of every living thing. I want to see through the eyes of the universe. I know that the only reason we can't put the puzzle together is because I can only see one piece. We're blind mice with elephants going, you know what? this looks like this but well but i saw this and the, everybody's arguing about what they're seeing as we all try to describe this describe the same elephant in the room and we debate over our experience like it's consequential as opposed to experiential mm. i know i got words for days 
that irritates some people. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, you remind you reminded, elicited or evoked in me also experiences I've had where I realized my memory has really, re uh, what's the word, like relish? No, not relish. Run though. rampant. <laughs> Just painted a different picture and of what actually, again, quote unquote, objectively happened. But right, it's amazing. I mean, quite frankly. And then there's some times where I'm like, now I don't even know if my memory is my memory or if what I'm like, interpreting my and now i'm actually confused as to like what do i even actually remember compared to the or is memory the picture we paint anyway right right people maybe think memory is objective like the past but maybe if we just redefine memory as the picture we paint memory is just paint. part of the translation it's we are taking yep. in so much information our brain tries to find a way to deal with it mm -hmm. my theory on for instance autism is what it is is it's evolutionary and it's figuring out how to deal with the sheer volume of information. And I'm not talking about computers. I'm not talking about phones. I'm talking if you really pay attention in the moment, there's so right. much. You're talking about the matrix, man. Right? You know, and the original <laughs> book, You Are All, We Are All Alone, is really, really good. There's a book that that's based on. And my dad was such a sci-fi nut that I'd read every Philip K. Dick movie before it came out. <laughs> uh, nice. You know, that Blade Runner is a great name for a movie, but Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is a great name for a book. <laughs> speaking Absolutely. Of, speaking of great names and We're All Alone, there, there's this album called We're All Alone in This Together. And I just really mm. love that title. I think that's its own moo. It's, it's, yeah, we're connected. Yeah, we're universe, but yeah, we're us. Mm. And that can drive yeah. people crazy. Either side of it, either oh my god, I can't deal with feeling that connected, or oh my god, I can't feel deal with feeling, feeling that, that alone. Disconnected, yeah. And the heart, absolutely. Like, that that's the yin and the yang of things. I think I've been able to keep trudging with with that knowledge, just because I I've always been able to understand that no one can fully understand me, no matter how much I try. Yeah, you could but, tell me all that. You could spend the rest of your life telling me everything about you, and exactly. it would still fall short. It would of your still experience. fall short, exactly. But also uh, that means, joke. but also that means <laughs> that I can I can learn things from other people that I wouldn't have expected, mm. because mm. I have I have a wealth of information inside of me. That also means that they have a wealth of information inside of them. There's no way that we have the same information. That. That right there, the day I realized every human being on this planet could teach me something, mm -hmm. that there wasn't a person that existed, and this is where it started. We'll, we'll start with person. There wasn't a person that existed that couldn't teach me something. Mm -hmm. And so if I tried to meet every teacher as a person mm -hmm. and a revered teacher, right. a guru, mm -hmm. each and every last one of you, mm -hmm. Even even you two, I, I know low standards. What can I say? <laughs> God bless you. Well, the funny thing is, it got to the point, and this is what's been going on lately, Brett. Is in the circles where they were worried about enlightenment for all sentient beings, and I've been spending all this time dabbling in lines. I got to the point of going, "Oh, wait a minute! There hasn't been a moment ever where we've drawn a line." that it didn't actually mean lesser and greater. And I don't know that I can figure out where sentient goes. So, okay, now I'm learning from all living things. That makes sense, right? Okay, that didn't stick in my craw as bad. I'm like, okay, all things. Well, but then the rain starts teaching you. Or then, you know what, it's something simple in the rocks or the grass or a flower making its way up through the cracks. So, okay, which part isn't teacher? Which part of the universe doesn't have that, you know what, potential? as you were saying, opportunity. Yeah. Everything. It's kind of like God God teaching God about God teaching God at the end of the day. Right? It's a big circle. Sounds like a circle. Sounds <laughs> like a circle to now, me. Because I don't belong to any particular... I love the idea that the way I judge wisdom is by whether or not it's wise, not by its source. Mm. So it's also open to the idea that Oh my God, Groundhog's Day, one of the most deep, meaningful movies in the world. If you think about either the cycle of life or how you deal with, he starts off, he chases all of the worldly things, money, alcohol, 
crazy girls. Then he then he becomes obsessed about a girl, and he doesn't finally get it until what he works on is himself. <laughs> or you know that once I opened up the idea of perspective came from everywhere, and he, I, that's how I became obsessed with working with artists. You know, working with musicians and painters, and that they are showing me what they're seeing already. You know, watching your playcast. You know, watching. Right. You know, passion is the gateway drug. It, it, it's even in the name you're expressing where your how you pulled yourself out of it. What felt like that the, you know what? I'm gonna put a shameless plug in. I actually have a book on Amazon for two dollars and ninety nine cents. It's a very cheap book. I put it out. They wouldn't let me make it free. It's Zen and the Art of Madness, and it's the from the point I gave up control and told my doctor I would not to, I would let them adjust my chemicals for a while and I would hold off as opposed to adjusting them myself. Um, so from my deepest, lowest depression to the things I found over the next four months. And it's a journal, it's drawn, it's got a lot of writing. It talks about movies I watched and what I found in like the wisdom I found kind of stuff. Nice. You know, and it's, you know, like when you get to, um, shoot, Queen's Gambit has a whole page, and half of it's a drawing of a queen on a chessboard, but it's the quote, this beautiful quote about the one girl looking at the other girl and going, no, I'm not your angel. I can't even save myself. I'm here because we're family, and I love you, and that's what family does. I'm totally butchering the quote. But that meaningful, I feel that way about humanity. You're my brother, Brett. Ross is my everybody's family. How can I? Where would I draw that line? Where would it be meaningful? Which brings us to why the, are you here? You can say it again. Why am I here? Yeah, why are you here? Why are you here? How <laughs> come you don't play some? How come you don't play sound effects with that? Dun, dun, oh, dun. We should. We should. We should. Why? Matt's been saying that. Matt's been saying that forever, but I haven't taken the time to figure it out. Why are you here? I'm here first and foremost because I can be. Mm. Um, I'm here to express the, as Matt, you're talking about, I'm here to express divine being from a particular point of view I that I know is Brett Warshawski, born 1975 in New Jersey. Um, and I'm here for the all win. I'm here, I'm here, mm -hmm. for, I'm here to contribute to I like what that. I believe. I'm here to contribute to what I believe as consciousness itself not speaking maybe so much local Brett from New Jersey but I'm here to help contribute to a destination that I feel as the universe the universe wants to experience which is just a ton more creativity love laughter adventure prosperity you know good times and right. people having the opportunity to know what it's like to fall in love with life, I guess something like that. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I liked the all the all win. That's you know when I think of. Yeah, the all win. You know, as we pray for often, you know, in Buddhist circles, it's the enlightenment of all whatever's living things or whatever concept or line they draw. But the all win. You know, I get so moved by the idea of pointing our light up at the sky. Our little spotlight, our little bat signal here in Columbus, Ohio. You know, our little studio where we're going, no, we don't want to put on a show anymore. Let's do a show about that. Let's do a show about not doing a show. <laughs> Very Seinfeld. Um, <laughs> Very. That, but to some extent, that's the biggest goal. Create spaces where I've found over and over again, today as well, 
sharing this beautiful energy with you and I don't distance doesn't matter we're on a you know we're on basically a phone connection and I can feel you here with me this presence you know in the sense of it's a good thing and I think we're all connected in that way I think that I'm not making connections I'm just going hey tapping people on the shoulder <laughs> and going hey how's it going have you met my friends you know what yeah no they're cool you want it and then I rinse wash repeat cover it all the all win you know not made up lines but real people whatever lines we're drawing I don't just I don't mean just weird you know state lines globally I mean the idea that we're constantly trying to figure out it's what we it's evolutionary it's defining yeah. what's risk and what's reward but we're kind of past that stage and we have to I believe yeah make a leap to a deeper consciousness that I, I think we're we're evolving past our physicality right now for a better to see a better understanding of not just our neural diversity but the way in which our it works at all evolution has never slowed down we're looking at our physicality going well gosh humans haven't changed in a while oh no that's not where it's going on our protein spikes are going crazy we're viral you know our job is to find keys to locks and every perspective new key but then again i don't know what locks we'll get so i'd, I'd like to see through I, the idea that there are eyes out there that have grown cold or weren't educated or were not given the chances or the ability i mean i wanted to see through those eyes just like i want to see through yours brett it it's it's beautiful. Meaningful. Yeah, it's meaningful that you're here. It's the most meaningful. I everybody jokes about our monetary situation. I don't care. The most valuable thing another human being can give me is what you've given us today. Your time. Your presence. You know, nothing else Stick compares. with it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Stick with it, man. I I have, I have a big issue with people around the money thing call it i've been in in the past not so much lately you know people talk about poverty consciousness and mm. i'm like i'm like are you kidding me you're getting on my case for following my bliss for being here to contribute to a world that works for all mm -hmm. and to stepping out of the unfettered fucking conventions and the way i relate to money and work and value mm -hmm. and you're telling me i'm in poverty consciousness so, Sorry, buddy. As the ancient Chinese proverb goes, if you're not part of the solution, get out of the fucking way of the people that are working on it. Because well, that is poverty. That's what poverty consciousness is. It ain't, has nothing to do with money. It's like the absolutely. poverty of, of, of hope and the poverty of possibility. And well, I, so, yeah, like, I have of a course good it's always good. Hey, we live, we, live in the, we, we live in the world of money. Right. It's good to have more money. Oh, absolutely. I want you all to have more money. <laughs> we'll all get more money. We'll do it together. We'll have tons of money together, and that'll all be good. But really... I applaud you for. Oh, thank you. Stick, I, I, right work's a guns. big deal to me. I, I'm very. It's everybody's a little uh, not happy with me at the moment about that. But um, you know what? I agree with you wholeheartedly. And to quote a wise friend that we both know, as Pink said, well, actually it was the judge that said it. But as Pink had to live through, tear down the wall. There comes a moment where you you've got to tear down those walls. That you know look at where you're at now dividing people doesn't work they tried god they tried in berlin and you know what it ends up people are people the lines are fake i i talk to people on every continent we do this same thing you and i are doing and over and over again i see me it's amazing it's it's changing ross and eyes life i believe i believe it is yeah <laughs> it's changing our lives no seriously dead like dead. no dead like dead. i us, love it us talking to people and us growing and getting to know people is something that i've been yearning for and looking for my whole life and i think that it's it's really good that we're able to do this now and that we're able to to be in this moment and be here 
you you blow me away regularly, bro. I love you. No, I mean in the good way. I mean I'm like yeah. I'm just sitting there moved both of you today. I I can't thank you enough. My head is the joy of other perspectives is for me it's more Legos in my head that go, "Oh, what if we stack it this way? What do we stack it that way?" It's yeah. constantly moving. And Brett, I love what you're doing. I really do. I love passion is the gateway drug. Yeah, it's dope. I love, man. you know what? We are there for you 100% well, when we can be <laughs> on the mental reform issue, we we both we both have those experiences. We both are very open about it. Um, I don't have an issue. Like like I said, the book that's out on uh, Amazon is very much about my experience and the hope. It's not. It's a hopeful book. It starts low, and then 200 pages later, it's about how to get out. You know that kind of thing. That nice. I, you guys just thank you. Thank you both. You know what? An hour and seven in, but I would do it for three more hours and talk more. Brett, I, <laughs> I, I am looking forward to us talking more uh, here and there. If that, if you're up for is that. Is that all ten? Is that all ten questions? That is all that is ten. ten questions. Yeah. Uh, oh, come on. There must be a bonus one. Ask one more bonus one. Well, uh, you got anything to plug? That's the bonus question. That's the bonus question, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you should like talk you've got you've, <laughs> you've got stuff to plug not because you're shilling but because you're doing meaningful things and sharing your experience you know that right on i don't I, I, go ahead go ahead sorry i am chilling i am chilling no doubt <laughs> <laughs> uh let me uh first give a shout out to technology uh for me this is what the internet is all about and it's only going to get better yes. that we're able to community build yeah. We're able to connect. We're able to co-create, and this is this is going to be the post-social networking age to some degree, yes. um, where we go more into what the internet was intended to be, which is like a global nervous system to some degree, as if we were all one super organism. Like it always has um, been. Like you mean like it's almost like, like it's it energy, and now we're gonna have an energy network for our energies, so that our energies can talk. I I I, I keep going. Can you guys keep hitting yourself with a hammer, but this is a hell of a tool. <laughs> exactly. So I'm saying that the blog and for your for your enjoyment, Matt, I haven't really made this clear. The Web3 platform that I'm part of creating is called Perspectivism. So we're definitely on the same page, my friend. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, so that's just cool stuff to to share, like. You know, we're going to build some new technologies that make this process of coming together evolutionarily, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and use these tools to our highest advantage. Oh, I, and I'm with you. Implement these technologies uh, for the good of all. So that's super exciting. That's a little tiny plug, just my excitement. Well, um, and, and go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. The, the thought that goes through my head is, trust me, if anybody knows Zuck, I can fix the whole thing in about 60 days. I can make the world love Facebook again. I know, right? It's possible. Well, it, it's possible. Hey, I, I met my wife on Facebook, so I'm not. I can't be 100 percent right. anti Facebook. What? Well, right? <laughs> well, the tool-wise, cool. Meta, cool. They've got stuff. They are not under. They, yeah. Man's definitely autistic. He doesn't know how to sell shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. I, I think I'm somewhere on that spectrum too. I don't mean that, and in, in, it's like I see you're missing the cues there, my friend. I do that sometimes as well. <laughs> oh man, yeah, totally. Yeah, so, it's a. We'll see so, what happens. So, so Web three platform perspectivism. So, can we? Is that a place we can get to, or is that a project you're working? Yeah, on? but it's annoying. It's uh, because it's felt a little bit weird. So I'll just maybe I'll give you some links, and you can put them, and we'll oh, put absolutely. them in the that's comments. That's perfect. Of, yeah, no, that's the perfect. post or something. Also, because I want you to put a link to your book, too. We should in the comments. I want to check it out. Okay. Uh, and then the only other thing is for everyone who's listening who's into or had experiences with being diagnosed with perceived mental illness and addiction, we've got this cool Facebook going uh, group called Mental Health Reformation, an alternative reality summit. So I feel like just inviting people to come check that out and uh, be a part of uh, kicking ass and taking names. I, you know what? Exactly. And it's funny. I... There's a part of me that's militant, and every t every once in a while I say things like "one world, one people." Um, I don't. For the record, I stole it from the uh, 
Falcon and Winter Soldier on Disney. <laughs> I, I really was moved by that part. Oh, that's that. We need masks with red handprints on them. But anyways, I, I feel it that to some extent my it's like the adults are waking up. I'm telling you, responsible people were doing responsible things, and we let the power hungry and you know narcissistic take over because that's who would have enough focus. And now we can talk to each other, and it's about time we have a conversation. That's all. The rest of the world, you, me, Ross, look at it. Look at the wave. And then every time I turn around, there's, there's, I find more of us going. Yeah, it's time. It's time. It's time for us to stand up and and do what we're doing. Isn't that badass, dude? When did you ever get to go, wait, and do what I'm doing? Isn't that powerful, Ross? That usually you're like, I got to go do something. I'm going to go do... Brett? Ross? Yes? For the sake of all the rest of us, I want you both just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, guys. What an amazing show. You can stay on for a minute if you want, brother. I'm going to... We're going to say good. Was there anything? Shoot. Or did I cut off more plugs because I'm so excited? Uh, I'm good. You're good? Dude, I can't say thank you enough. I, I can't. I, there's just not. I'm that moved. <laughs>